Hey, what's up, guys? This is Seth Kniep, Kniep in a Real. The hardest thing you will ever do as a founder of a company is recruiting, training, and managing employees. And yet, ironically, one of the biggest blessings to your business is going to be the employees you hire to help you. So it really is a double-edged sword. On one side, they can be amazing and help scale your company. On the other side, they can be a headache. Well, today I want to talk about what to do when an employee does not follow instructions or drops the ball on something. How do you approach them? A lot of employers who are new to this avoid approaching them. They just bring it up passively or they ignore it and hope it goes away. And this is terrible because it sets a precedent for the future. And that brings me to point number one, set precedents early. As soon as you get going in that car and you get on the freeway, you want to merge on as quickly as you can because you're going to get there faster. The same is true for your business when you hire someone. They're going to take you the least for granted. They're going to appreciate and respect you the most because they don't know you yet. The more people become familiar with you, it's easier for them to be disrespectful or push back or argue. So at the beginning, you want to set that precedent and let them know, this is my expectation, this is my requirement, and it is not negotiable. I want to tell you a quick story, something that happened to me literally today that illustrates this. One of my clients is a coffee shop with multiple locations in Austin. One of Get Better Clients' clients, a company that I started. Our job is to build out the entire marketing and sales funnel for this company so they can get more wholesale coffee and more mobile coffee services to events like ACL in South by Southwest. Now, I have been given a salesperson who previously worked in operations and his job full time is to work under me as I work with him to build out the sales program. The problem is he has been pulled into multiple shop locations to help on many occasions. So I went back to the owner and I said, look, we need him full time. And he said, no problem. He's yours full time. However, this morning he was supposed to be working on sales. But when I walked into the coffee shop, he was behind the counter helping people. Now his heart intention is good. He wants to help the other staff. And because he knows so much, a lot of the staff depend on him for information that they would not have access to otherwise. The problem with this is it creates a massive challenge for me because my goal, having been hired by this coffee shop, is to set up the sales system so it can run and they no longer need us and they make a lot of money. That's the goal. However, to do that, I need this guy's full-time commitment. So after we sat down for a meeting time, I said, I have a question for you. I saw you behind the bar today. Can I count on you to be full-time in sales? And he started explaining to me why he was working behind the bar, helping people with coffee. I said, I get that. But for me to do this, I have to know that you are going to be full-time in sales. Otherwise, it won't work. He said, it sounds like you're making an ultimatum. I said, you're right. I am making an ultimatum. Will you do this full-time? Can I depend on you? So step number one, set the precedent early. You might be nervous. You might be uncomfortable. You might really like this in employees. So you don't want to ruffle feathers. But I promise you, you are not doing yourself or him or her a service when you avoid confrontation. Momentary instability is worth long-term stability. And that brings me to my second point. Not only do you need to set the precedent early, but do not get emotional. If you tend to be a more emotional person or you operate by feeling and intuition, there's nothing wrong with that. That's actually a gift and you can use that. But don't get emotional in a confrontation because if you do, you trigger something in them and now emotions are talking and no more facts and logic. It also can make you appear weak and unstable and flighty. So stay calm. One of the ways I stay calm is by praying first and say, God, give me wisdom on what to say and what not to say. And every time he shows up and helps me with that so that I can stay calm and say the right thing. And that brings me to my third point. Don't talk too much. This is the tendency of employers or managers is to keep talking, to fill in the empty space because they're uncomfortable. The more words you use, the less authority you have and the weaker you appear. So make your point, then shut up. So for me today... And believe me, I didn't start like this for years. I had to learn the hard way how to hire and manage employees, but I've hired and managed hundreds of employees now. So I have a little bit of experience in this. And then when he spoke, I listened. And that brings me to my next point. Listen to what they have to say. Once they're done saying it, repeat it back to them. Hey, John. Hey, Bobby. Hey, Lucy. Just to make sure I understand what you are saying 
and then repeat it back to them. That helps them to feel validated. And you're not just here to tell them what's up and move on. You're here to show that you listen, validate what they're saying, but then go right back to your main point again. I understand what you're saying. I get that. And I respect that. That's what I told them. However, for this to work, I need to depend on you full time. So let me just recap the points. Number one, set precedence early. Don't avoid confrontation. Number two, don't get emotional. Focus on facts. Stay calm. Number three, don't talk too much. Make your point, then shut up. Number four, listen to what they have to say and repeat it back to them to validate what they are saying so they know that you genuinely care. And that brings me to number five. Instead of demanding a commitment, ask for one. Some of the more ENTJ, ESTJ, Meyer-Briggs personalities will tend to just say, here's what I need you to do, so do it. And the problem with that is people become afraid of the employer and then they gossip with other employees. You don't want that. So to help avoid that, align with them, but respectfully ask them. So what I did today is I said, look, and I'll just call him Bobby. I said, Bobby, can I count on you for full-time sales? And then I said nothing. And I let him talk. And towards the end of the conversation, he actually came up with his own solution, which was cool. And that's also a part of listening. He said, let's meet at a different place in the coffee shop. That way people don't ask him for help. I said, great, we'll meet at the roastery. No problem, done. But then again, I repeated it. Can I count on you to do full-time sales? Notice I'm asking him to make a commitment. What that does is it inspires your employee. Now they feel challenged to rise to the challenge. Instead of me saying, I need to count on you, so be full-time. I said, can I? I'm putting the ball in their court. You have to say yes or no. If he says no, then this isn't going to work. And if it's your employee, you may have to let them go. And that brings me to my last point. Use this moment as an opportunity to invest in their growth. Towards the end of the conversation, I said, Bobby, you know what's cool about this? This isn't just an opportunity to work with you professionally, but also to disciple you. You struggle with focus. You're great with people. You're great at sales. You're great at connecting, but you are not good at focus. This is an opportunity to learn to say no to a thousand things and focus on one thing. And it's going to take time but I want you to know I'm here for you. I'm going to mentor you and I'm going to help you get there because I understand how difficult it is when you see all these opportunities that you want to take hold of. Now you've gone a whole nother level. Now to your employee, assuming they have the right character and a humble mindset, they realize you're not just helping them do the right thing at work. You are investing in them as a person and you cannot put a price tag on that. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, Thumbs up it, hit subscribe, and I'll see you the next time.